Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm with uh, Centennial Park Library and I'm going to teach you how to paint with watercolors today. Okay, so now we're going to go over another technique and this is called masking. So I'm going to paint a starry night scene um, with the moon and some stars. So I'm going to be using this masking fluid and you can use any masking fluid, but this is the one that I use. So give it a good shake before you use it. Make sure that the brush that you're using to apply it is a cheap brush. It's going to get messed up. You definitely don't want to use your nice soft watercolor brushes for these for this because they will never be the same again. So a bit of a pain getting it open. Give it a good squeeze. Pop that bubble at the top. And now I've drawn a moon or a circle up here. Um, it's again it's on a vertical and a horizontal third of the canvas. So all I'm going to do is just stack. I want to keep that moon white as I do this. So I'm just going to paint um, over that surface of that circle. Just cover the whole surface of that circle with masking fluid. Um, you want to make sure that those bubbles all pop as you're doing this because bubbles will sometimes leave space in the center and let some of the paint through. Basically, the paint will not stick to any surface that has masking fluid on it. You kind of have to work fast with this stuff. It is, it does have a tendency to dry and then pull up on you as you're painting, um, especially if it's not very fresh. So now I've painted my moon. So what I'm going to do is I want to create some stars. So I'm going to get my brush nice and wet and I'm just going to kind of tap it tap it towards the canvas, give it some shakes, um, turn it upside down and just give it a few shakes. Give it. So I'm holding it in two fingers and tapping it with one of my other fingers. You can also just paint, put the masking fluid down, and close it <laughs> so I don't spill it everywhere and then hold the brush with one hand and tap it with the other hand. So I want to go for kind of a Milky Way effect, so I'm concentrating my stars more in the center here. You can also grab the bristles and flick, but that's going to get masking fluid on your fingers, so just be aware of that. I want a little bit more stars on the right side there, because I don't really have anything going on there. So, okay, so I'm going to get it wet one more time, place my masking fluid aside. And there we go, a nice splash of stars. Okay, that's what I want, spattering of stars. Okay, and then I'm going to let that dry and I'll show you what, what we do next after we're done with this. So I've had my, given my masking fluid some time to dry, so now I'm ready to start playing around with my starry night sky. And the wonderful thing about a starry night sky is it can be any color you want it to be. Um, but I want, I'm going to stick with the traditional blue, blues, grays, blacks, maybe some purples and some greens mixed in there. So first we're going to start with the big boy, the biggest brush that you have, and we're just going to get the canvas nice and damp. So I'm going to go from side to side and the water will not stick to where the masking fluid is. Just get a good amount of water on that canvas not sopping wet, but you definitely don't want any dry spots. Um, let's get it nice and shiny. I like to look at it from the side so I can see just how much water is on there. So a little bit dry still at the bottom. And Go up and down just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, and now actually in the middle, I am going to get it a little bit more wet. So I'm actually going to let some of the water run down there. Normally, when we're painting with watercolor, we want to try to avoid what we call the cauliflower effect, which is where the paint spreads out and runs into other, other paint. But I want that for this painting, so I'm going to use that. So. I have prepared some paints on my um, on my palette here. Uh, I'm using the watercolor tubes. 
Uh, and the wonderful thing about these is you can mix them into the colors that you want, you can prepare them in advance, and then you can just re-wet them when you're ready to use them. So, some of my colors are already mixed. I might have to mix some more here. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna switch to a slightly smaller brush. So this is a number three over eight uh, and it's slightly asymmetrical. So I can use it like a, a kind of like a fan brush or I could use it as a tip. So I'm gonna kind of just get it wet and then I'm gonna go with a very light uh, bluish green color for the center here. So something to keep in mind is we've got this moon, the space around the moon is going to be lighter, slightly lighter than the space around it. So going with this light Prussian blue blend that I've prepared, I wanna add some greens in here in some places. And you are going to build layer on layer of this stuff. So you can just kind of go crazy with this. I mean, maybe I want some green over here. Maybe I want some more green over there. I'm going to go with uh, some of this purple-ish mixture in the corner in here. I want some more purples in here. And beautiful. it's wonderful when you just mix up these colors and you just let them happen on the canvas. Let's go with some um, ultramarine, add some ultramarine in here. And for this technique, we're going to try to keep it pretty damp. So normally we try to not get it too wet, but for this starry sky, and see how the stars are starting to come through from the masking fluid that I flung on there. So for this technique, we're going to kind of keep it damp and let the paints mix on the canvas. But of course, you don't want them to run either. I'm gonna throw some black in there. I wanna dull this color up a little bit. Um, normally, if you wanna just make something darker, I don't usually use blacks for that. Um, I tend to go with opposite colors. So if you look at a color wheel, I have some rough color wheels over here. For my starry sky, I'm gonna stick to that half of the color wheel. I'm not gonna add any of these colors in. And as long as I stick to that side of the color wheel, where these are gonna blend, the purples and the greens, they're gonna create lovely tones. Um, where you get your browns is where you mix opposite colors. So the ones that are across from each other. So if you want to go darker, you can always go with an opposite color instead of a black if you want to keep it um, bright and not dull it up. So. I'm um, going to go more, more of that Prussian blue, uh, throw in some more purple over here, I'm going to add some darker tones, some blues, see some of that cauliflowering is already starting to happen there. My canvas is getting a little bit dry, so I'm going to add some more moisture here, especially here in the middle. Just kind of keep it moving, keep it blending. You don't want the paint to settle because then you're going to get hard lines and we don't have any hard lines in a starry sky. We just have beautiful, cloudy, vista, vastness, wonderful, merging, playing, dancing of colors. cover up, not cover up, but I'm going to blend in some of this blue into some of the greens there. Maybe a little bit too green for my liking. And of course I've got the Prussian blue, which is already kind of greenish. Throw some of that in there. And where that blends with a purple, you're going to get something that's like an ultramarine blue, but it's not quite an ultramarine blue. So just kind of fanning all of these colors out. Anywhere you see hard lines, just kind of fan it out with your brush. Just blend it around and you can have fun with this. If you decide that you want your starry sky to be pink, make it pink. 
you want it to be orange, make it orange. Just my advice is stick to one half of the color wheel only. But you don't want to listen to my advice and you want to make your Stardust night as colorful as you like, then go ahead and do that. You do you, boo. So I'm gonna add some of this Prussian blue to the black because I want to get some darker tones on the edges here, some deeper colors. And I do like what the black does in a painting like this, in any painting really. Blacks make colors duller. So if you don't like dull colors, stay away from the blacks. I do like my colors a little bit more dull. I like the more subdued. Um, I think that's one of the beautiful things about watercolor is that you get a lot of beautiful subdued hues and tones. So don't worry about it if you get a little bit of streaking going on. You can always blend that out later. Add some of this blue. I want to add a little bit more purple on the corner here with some black. Add some blacks in there and I'm going to add some of this um, ultramarine to deepen it up. Careful not to go too dark right around the moon. I'm going to add some water to make my colors lighter. Uh, kind of creating a halo around the moon, almost, there we go. And also keep in mind that when this dries, you're actually going to, um, your colors are going to lighten up and they're going to become a little bit more dull. Ooh, I love when what happens when purples blend with blacks and you get these mauve colors. <laughs> I like mauve. I don't care if it's an old lady color, maybe I'm old. I think it's beautiful. Okay, so I want to go with darker, deeper hues on the ends here. So I'm going to mix in more of that um, ultramarine with the black. I need a little bit more water there. So really what you're just aiming for is you're trying to get the lightest part of your painting in the center and you're trying to get darker tones around the edges but not too dark because we're going to add some trees here at the end. So we want some contrast to be able to get some trees visible in that night scene. And you can always just re-wet any of the paint on your palette. If it dries, just add a little bit of water. It's not a problem, not a problem at all. So now, remember what I said about opposite colors? Because I want to create some depth down here, I'm actually going to add just the smallest little bit of red. I'm going to mix that in with some of this black and um, Prussian blue, add some of the ultramarine. I'm going to get this muddy blue purple color and that's what I want. That's what I'm going for. That's what I wanted. That was all part of my master plan. And if it's not, I'm going to say it is anyway. So let's get some more, I'm getting a little bit more water, but now I've thinned it down too much, so I'm going to add more pigment. And th this is, as long as you're using the right paper, this is an incredibly forgiving scene to paint. You, it's really hard to mess this one up, um, because whatever you come out with, you can just claim that that's what you were going for. So I'm just going to dull up this blue. It was a little bit too bright for what I was going for. And I want to add a little bit more of that Prussian blue down here. I'm going to draw some of that in here. Just blend it in, blend it in. And now I've got a lot of streaks going on, but that's okay because if you ever look at the Milky Way, you'll notice you've got something that looks kind of like clouds and nebulas. So we're going to add some of those. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a sponge and if you don't have a sponge you can just use a kitchen towel too. So either one of these will work. So I'm going to get my sponge, I'm going to use my jar of clean water, get it good and wet, wring it out all the way. And now with a very, very light touch, I'm just going to dab, 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 dab. And now you're starting to create that texture that looks like nebulous. So just 
lightly dab, lightly dab. Getting rid of some of those streaks and cauliflowering, blending them a little bit more as you dab. And it's a good idea to start from the center and dab out so that your lightest colors don't get um, dirtied up by the darker colors on the out, outer edges. So just dab, dab, dab. Not too much. I mean, if you, if you find you take off too much paint, you can always go add more paint. But just dab, dab, dab. And if you're happy with the result, once you feel like you've done enough dabbing, and you're happy with what you see, now you can just let that sit and dry, and then I'll show you the next step, which is the funnest step. Hi, so I'm back. Uh, I've given it some time to dry. I browsed the catalog of the library for a little bit and found some good books to read. So now this is more or less dry. It's not 100%, but it's dry enough for me to go to the next step. So the first thing I'm going to do, so what I want to do is I want to add some conifers, some tall trees in the foreground. But before I do that, I need to get rid of my masking fluid because the, the trees, the paint won't stick to any areas where I still have stars. So I'm going to just use my thumb. You can also use an eraser if you prefer, if you don't like the feeling of the paper on your skin. So you're just going to rub and see what happens. That fluid just comes off, just peels away like a film, revealing the white that we left underneath the white canvas, little starry spots in the sky. For the moon, the larger area, you're gonna wanna try to find a corner or something, and then you can use a fingernail, or you can keep rubbing, um, but you should be able to just peel that whole moon. Isn't that satisfying? Peel that whole moon off in one go. Um, for larger areas like the moon, I try not to rub over it, especially if my fingers are a little bit um, covered in paint, because you might rub some of that beautiful white away. Okay, and that looks like oh, there's a few more stars. Okay, so it looks like we got all of our paint off and we've got our starry night sky, nebulous Milky Way kind of vibe going on. So now we can go and build on top of this. So I'm going to grab my number eight brush and I grab my palette again. So the first thing I'm going to do is just around this moon, I'm going to get some, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some paint on my finger. Okay. And then we've, once we've done taking care of that, <laughs> um, I'm going to grab a very light wash of this purple and get some of that water off my brush. Very light wash of this purple that we've been using. I'm just gonna clean up around the edges of my moon. Very, very lightly. Just make my moon a little bit rounder. Just very, very lightly. There we go, okay. So now my moon is nice and round. Now, I'm gonna let that little bit dry there for a while. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to rinse off this brush and put it away. And I think I want, I want a size six brush, which apparently I don't have. So we'll use the size eight brush. Okay, so we're going to use a size eight brush and we're going to do our conifers in the foreground. So I'm going to wet my black um, with this brush. It's dried a little bit along with my canvas while I was browsing. So I'm just going to draw that brush out to a tip and then I'm going to decide where my conifer is going to live. This is where Bob Ross would say big decisions, big decisions. So we're going to make some big decisions here. And I want one really tall conifer up here. So I'm just going to draw the stem, uh, just rough. We're going to start with just some rough stems. I want another tall one up here, but not quite as tall as that one. I want a short one right here, taller one here. I'm going to go put a short one close to this tall one. 
but I don't want those two to be the same height, so I'll make this one a little bit taller. Okay, so now I have an idea of where my conifers are gonna go. And for the, for the conifer trees, we don't want to be perfect with them. We wanna kind of stay a little bit on the rough side. So we're just gonna start from the top and just tease down some branches, letting them kind of bounce and play as we go, leaving some open space and some kind of sloppy looking ends. We don't, they, the branches are never perfectly set together. They never look like those um, air fresheners that they sell and they hang in the fronts of cars, right? They're kind of a little bit more feathery than that. Messy feathers, that's a good way to think of them. So these are tall conifers, they're reaching for the light. And these are not happy trees. They're somber trees and that's okay. Trees can be somber too if they wanna be. You don't always have to be happy. It's okay, you do you boo. Okay. Added a little bit of black there. So I've got more, but now I wanna thin it out some more. Get some more water in there, draw it out to a point, and be careful that you don't wind up with too much paint on your brush. So clean some of that paint off, and then if you still want to, I'm using some newspaper over here, and I'm actually just gonna drag my brush across it, or you can just drag it across your tissue. Just don't dab your picture with a tissue after this. <laughs> so there's another conifer right there. Start from the top and just tease the branches down. Just tease them down. Getting them nice and wispy. They're a little bit wind torn. A little bit tired. But they're still standing, still going, still growing. Strong, resilient trees, these conifers, evergreens care about the season, they just keep doing their thing. I like that in trees. Let me make this guy, get this guy some more leaves down here. We're actually gonna wind up with an horizon here, but that's okay. We'll add that in later. So you don't have to go all the way to the bottom, unless you want to. If you, if you wanna have your horizon right at the bottom of the painting, that's okay too but I find it's more pleasing to the eye to have the horizon cut up a little bit. So it's just like the mustache, just teasing a mustache out of the bottom of this tree. <clears throat> Tease the branches out of this one. And I'm using a pretty big brush and you'll see sometimes I let my paint go a little bit dry, that's okay. It all creates an effect, the illusion that this is a real tree, not something cut out of paper, not some clip art. This is a tree that's lived and seen some stuff, stood through a lot. So just kind of using my, um, the stem that I drew as a, a guide, but it's okay if the branches cross over because trees aren't one dimensional. They've got branches on the back and branches on the front. And some of those are gonna be visible from every angle. So just teasing it out. And if you make a mistake, just keep rolling with it. Just turn that into part of the painting. It just adds character. So, I need a little bit more black here. These trees are completely silhouetted against this night sky. I'm gonna add a little bit more black. I'm gonna add a little bit more black here. Mix it up again. Don't want it to be too thick, 
So make sure you add some water to it. Uh, spread it out a little bit. And you can always go back and add more layers on top of anything. Tease, tease, tease this guy out of the mist, out of the night, tease him into existence. And you'll see sometimes I cross over my trunk. It's okay, that's what creates that solidity in the center. And if your trees are asymmetrical, that's also okay. Most places tend to get wind from one side more than the other, or sun from one side more than the other, so they might not be growing perfectly symmetrical. Okay, so now I'm down here. I'm gonna fill this hole in here. So I'm gonna put a really short little conifer in here in the front. Just basically want to fill up that space. A little bit more water. This is a quick painting. The longest thing for this is the dry time because you have to leave the dry time for the moon and you have to leave the dry time for the starry backdrop and you have to come back and do your trees so and now i'm going to show you now things are going to get really magical so you might think oh that looks pretty good at this point sarah but i'm not done i am not done so i've got some lighter trees up here i'm gonna add another layer in the front so now i'm using the really dark paint so we're trying to create a forest here. This is a whole community of trees. So keep building into the foreground, going darker and darker as we come to the front. Maybe this is a good place to put another dark, tall tree right here. Another melancholy little tree living up here in the It's okay if it's just a mess of shadows. We, our focus is over here, not in the bottom. And actually having the dark colors in the bottom of the painting. So just to finish off this bottom part here, I'm just kind of going to just go over. So having the darker colors in the foreground actually helps to draw your eye up to the moon, which is our focus point of our painting. That's why we put it on we divided the canvas into thirds this way, then thirds this way, and that's where we set our moon. So that's one of the common tricks of composition, to set anything that you want to stand out on that, on that third. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I, I believe that this is a conifer forest, the top of a conifer forest, that works for me. Uh, just slightly fill in more at the top of this guy. He's very tall, so he probably gets a lot of wind up there. So he might be pretty sparse at the top. And some of those branches are probably bent, and that's okay. Go a little bit taller with this guy, just to define him a bit more. Don't overwork it and don't overthink it. Just let it happen, let it be. And now I'm pretty happy with this guy. Okay, so now, let my trees dry. I'm done with the trees. Maybe just a little bit more dark black here. Making sure that you get it to the edges of where that tape is. So now I'm gonna put away this brush, I'm done with it. And the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a smaller, smaller brush. So I'm gonna go to my number four. So now my moon is nice and dry. Check around, make sure. Now you're gonna go to a clean water again. Use your clean water. So the moon's not perfectly white, right? And because it's our focal point, we wanna get more action going on there. So. I'm just going to get this moon wet, but be very careful not to go to the edges of your moon. Be very careful as you're getting this wet that you're not touching 
the purple around it. So we're leaving a slight rim around the edges of the moon. So I get this moon nice and damp with my clean water. And now I want to go, I'm going to go with a very light yellow for my moon. So I'm going to go to a different palette that I've prepared and grab a little bit of the uh, yellow ochre, blend in some white. And I'm gonna go, this is such a light color, you can actually test it. You can test it on your white um, tissue just to make sure that it's a very, very light color. Always add more water to make it lighter. Now I'm just going to, just the moon tends to have some shadows on the left side especially. I'm gonna get my moon a little bit yellowish and then I'm going to use just the slightest amount of... I'm going to go to my palette for this. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre, put it up there. And then I'm going to go with the slightest amount of this forest green, mix it in. And that's too bright. I want this color to be duller. I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt umber. That's still very bright. Um, to dull this color up, you want to know what the, how to make it duller. Where is it on the color wheel? It's around somewhere between yellow and orange. So what's the opposite color? Purple or blue. So we're going to add some purple or blue to make it duller. So we're going to go with this dull blue, I think, the ultramarine. Mix some of that in. Yeah, you see how that makes it duller? And now, because I want this to actually be a little bit more gray, I'm going to add just the smallest dab of black, and that's too much. So I get rid of some of that over here, and then I put some more in over there. And now, because it's just a dark, dark color, I'm going to add some white, and it's okay if you mix, if you mess your paints up. You can always clean them up later. Yeah, there we go. See how the white kind of just made it a duller color? So now, and use this color and very, very, very slightly, very faintly, maybe a little bit more water. I'm just going to dab some spots on the moon. There's a spot over there and one up there. There's a lot of spots going on here and there's one at the bottom. And if you start doing this and you're like, oh no, my moon is too dark, what did I do? Don't use this tissue. Take a clean one because I got black on that one, remember? So you just grab a, a clean piece of kitchen towel, wrap it around your finger, and just very lightly dab away at your moon. And make sure you move that finger. Just dab away. Now it's too light again. So, I'm going to add a little bit of black because I want this color to be more dull. So I'm going to mix some gray over there essentially and then we're going to start over. It's the wonderful thing about watercolors. If you're using the proper paper, it's never too late to fix it. You can always start over. It's very forgiving. It's a very forgiving medium if you're doing it with the right tools. A little bit more spots over here. It's too too dark for my liking. So I'm gonna get some plain water on my brush, get some dampness going on, and just dab dab dab. Dab 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 until you're happy. So just keep working on that moon until you're happy. Very, very light touch. Don't, don't give it too much color. Oops. Or you will be sorry. Okay, one more. Small, small down. Grab some of the yellow off there. Just gonna put it back, put that shadow back. And last time, 
dab that yellow away. There we go. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think my moon's okay. And yeah, I'm gonna call that a wrap. I'm gonna say that's my starry night and I'm happy with it. So now let me show you the last part of this where the magic really happens. And it all comes together because this one's dry enough for me to do it with since I used a fairly dry black and I've already let my background set and my moon is just a small piece of the paper. So this, now I'm gonna remove my masking tape. So being, putting it down, whoop, this, is it, this one is taking a little bit of the paper with it. Normally it wouldn't. Pulling it away from the page slowly, going slow. It's okay, it's just tearing on the side there. That's not a big deal, I can remove that afterwards. It's just because I stuck masking tape on the other side and pulled it off, okay. So that's the top one. I grab the top one on this side, pull it away from the page. Look at that, it's revealing a lovely, tidy edge, making it look like a photograph, an old photograph. I do the bottom one first so I don't end up with a paper that flops down on me. Going very slow. This one is taking away the paper a little bit. I don't know, this might not be the right masking tape though. Because I found this in the supply closet, not the art closet, so. Uh, and I might have also put it on there too firmly. So holding on to my paper. If you go slowly, it's not a problem though. Hold on to my paper and slowly pull it away. it. And throw that away. And starry night. Thanks for watching. This has been the Zen of Watercolors with Sarah and Pasco County Libraries.